Now let's uh, start looking at examples in um, uh, floating and sinking and I want to look at example one. This example one is on uh, page 62 of your course book. This is book four. So if you've got book four with you at home, we can look at this example. So let's go straight to it and I will start by reading and then I will show you on the on the board over here then uh, I will uh, like we're saying I will definitely go to the to the white board or the blue board I'm using a blue board and uh, show you how you solve this question step by step so let's start by reading the question you're given that a solid sphere of radius at three centimeters and made of material of density 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed is fully immersed in a liquid of density 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed. Determine the apparent weight of the sphere. So let's look at the situation. In other words, let's look at what we are provided with. So we are given this solid uh, sphere. I'm going to draw one over here. Solid sphere. Uh, we are given that it's got a certain radius r and uh, the radius is uh, three centimeters so that r is three centimeters and then it's got a density its density i'm going to use a d because i want to use rho for the density of the fluid in which it is immersed uh, we are told that it is 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed. Is it 2.6? Yes, 2.6. 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed. And you should know that uh, this is equivalent to 2,600 kilograms per meter cubed. Just in case you need that value, it can be worked out that way. Also, these radius of three centimeters you may want to convert it into centimeters uh, into meters rather by dividing centimeters by 100 so these are some of the details that you've given then it is fully immersed in a liquid so over here i'm going to draw this particular container here and uh, we are going to say that this liquid it's like that so it is fully immersed and the density of the liquid in which it is immersed we've been told it is 0 0.8 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed again we know this is uh, 800 kilograms per meters cubed that is the density of the liquid in which the solid is immersed now we want to know the apparent weight of the sphere the apparent weight remember apparent weight is the weight the sphere appears to have when it is immersed somewhere in our theory we have already seen that up thrust is equal to the weight of the object in air minus the weight in the liquid or the weight in the fluid. This weight that the liquid appears to have when it is immersed in the fluid is what we refer to as the apparent weight of the substance or the apparent weight of the sphere in this case. So we can work it out if we know its weight in air and we know the up thrust. So let's make weight of the fluid the subject. I'm going to bring this one to this other side of the equal sign and then I take up thrust to the other side. So we are going to get its real weight which is the weight in air minus the up thrust. So if I succeed in working out this and working out this I just need to get the difference and I get the weight in um, in the fluid which is the apparent weight of the substance let's start with weight in air 
for me to calculate the weight of any object. I need to know its mass and then multiply it by the gravitational field strength. Now, I'm talking about the mass of this solid. The mass of this solid can be worked out by multiplying the density of the solid by its volume. So, uh, the density is 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed. So, we are going to say density times the volume. Of course, times the G. That G is this one here. I already know how much density it is. Um, that one is 2,000... 600 kilograms per meter cubed. How about the volume of the sphere? I know the equation for working out the volume of the sphere because of this. 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So I'm going to substitute in these values. The density of the solid is 2,600 hoping this space will be enough for me to do that. The volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed is 0 0.03 cubed. Of course, times the whole of this now gives me the volume of the sphere. And then the g is 10. Let's see that. It's very, very easy to do that. All you need to do now here is get your calculator and get this weight. So, uh, I'm going to calculate that one later on. Let me calculate the up thrust. Up thrust, we've already uh, been shown that it is given by rho V G, where rho is the density of the fluid in which the object is immersed. And we have seen that this one is 800 kilograms per meter cubed. The volume of the fluid displaced, how do we get that? Remember this object has been immersed in this liquid. The volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the object, provided the object is fully immersed as in this case. So the volume that we worked out here is the same volume that we need over here. So 4 over 3 pi r cubed which is 0 0.03 and don't forget to cube that value times of course the value of g which is 10. So this one will give me the value of the up thrust. And then of course for me to get the weight of the fluid, uh, the weight of the solid in the fluid which is the apparent weight of the solid, I just need to get the difference between these two values. So let me go straight to my calculator and work that one out. So let me get the first one. The first one is uh, 2600. I multiply that one by 4. I multiply that one by uh, pi. Then I multiply that by 0 0.03 cubed. Let me see whether there is a cube here. Yes, there is a cube. 0 0.03 uh, cube uh, times 10. And then all that I divide by 3. And I'm going to get this value here. 2.940. So the weight in air will be 2.940. You know, recurring. There is 530724. But I can write up to 3 decimal places. Newtons. The next one, 800, of course, times 4 times pi. And remember, for you to get pi, you just need to go to shift and then press the pi here, just next to the exponential button here at the bottom. 
Uh, so I've got 4 uh, times pi times uh, 0 0.03. That one is also cubed. Uh, times 10. All that divided by 3. And I get 0 0.90. 0 0.90. Five newtons. I've just rounded it up because it is 0 0.09047786884 recurring. So I round it up to three decimal places and I have 0 0.90. So I increase that value, the four, it becomes five because the next digit is greater than five. So and these are the two values that I need in order to get the weight, um, the weight in the fluid. So the weight in the fluid, which we said it's actually equal to the apparent weight of the object, is going to be given by 2.940. I subtract 0 0.905. And what are we going to get here? 2.90 I mean 2.940 minus 0 0.905 and that gives me 2.035 2.035 newtons that is how we would work out this question. Let me verify whether that is the answer from the textbook because this one is basically an example in our textbook. And the answer is 2.04. Yes, they've rounded it up to two decimal places and you can see our answer is correct there. So what is it about problem solving that I want you to be aware of? Number one, when you read the question, note down the physical quantities that you've been provided. That is the first thing that you should be able to do. Like I've done here, I've noted down the, the this density here, I've noted down this density, and wherever possible, I'm converting them into SI units. Reason being, I cannot be able to do this unless I have... Uh, these values in SI units because I wanted to do one-time substitution. Of course, you can use the density in grams per centimeter cubed, the volume in centimeters cubed, but then when you get that mass in uh, grams, before you can use this equation, you will have to convert that mass from grams to kilograms in order for you to get the weight of the object. The same thing happens here but i decided to use si units first time because i wanted to do one time substitution to substitute everything uh, at a go so the first question is or the first step is to write down whatever the question gives you and then have some kind of sketch that you can work with because sometimes in problem solving you understand questions using sketches then it is from the questions that have been asked that I would know what kind of equation to use. Because this is one of the questions you might be asking yourself. Why am I using that quest equation? How did I know that I was supposed to use that equation? Is it because it is given in the textbook? No, it is not because it is given in the textbook. I'm using that equation uh, because I have been prompted to think about it by the questions which are asked and by the physical quantities which are provided in the question. So as you take time to write down whatever is provided in the question, you are giving your mind some kind of an idea to think about what would be the question being asked here and what would be the best method to approach it. So that is one of the ways in which you can prompt your mind to think of the best way to work out the question. Now let us look at example two. And as usual, 
I want to repeat this, that when you are solving a question or when you are taking a lesson, it's always good to arm yourself with a notebook, a calculator, and probably maybe even the course book like this one so that you can be able to be to to follow along as i explain various parts so let's go through this example we are told that in this example a cylinder of length 5 cm and uniform cross section area of 50.24 is suspended from a spring balance and totally immersed in water if the density of the material of the cylinder is 1.25 grams per centimeter cubed, determine the up thrust on the cylinder and the reading on the spring balance. Take the value of G to be 10 meters per second squared and the density of water to be 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. So, as usual, let us write down what the question gives us with looking at the situation. So, we've got... This is the support for the spring balance. So I'll have my spring balance over there. Of course, for it to support the cylinder, there must be maybe a piece of thread or rope. So let me draw the cylinder over there. And it's got a height or a length of five centimeters the cross section area this cross section area here a is given and this length is also given now notice that as i draw this diagram i'm thinking about if the cross section area is given if i multiply it by this length here then definitely i will get the volume of the cylinder and if I get the volume of the cylinder, chances are that if this object is fully immersed in uh, the fluid, which is water, I can be able to get the volume of the fluid displaced, which is a very important concept in this topic. The volume of the fluid displaced, uh, which if multiplied by the density of the fluid, will give us the mass of the fluid displaced. And if it is multiplied by G, it will give us the up thrust. As a matter of fact, the first thing they ask us here is to calculate the up thrust that is acting on this cylinder, the up thrust. You can see the first equation which comes into my mind is rho vg. Why do I think about the up thrust being equal to rho vg instead of using the other equation? Up thrust is equal to real weight or weight in air minus the apparent weight. Why is it that this one came into my mind? Again, this is the, the, the importance of writing down the physical quantities as they, are given, as they are given in the question and probably even using a sketch. Because as you do that, your mind puts down this information. It starts putting down information in a certain pattern depending on what it knows. So your mind works with what you have already stored in it in the past. So it goes back to your... Um, your 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 storage so to speak and then it asks itself what is it that i can do with these figures that have just been given i've been given the cross section area the length is given i think i can be able to work out the volume and the moment it occurs to me that i can be able to work out the volume when it comes to working out the up thrust and the term up thrust is mentioned two equation comes into my mind one of them is up thrust is equal to rho vg and the other one is equal to weight in air minus apparent weight. The second one appears to be a little bit complicated because it has got so many unknowns. First of all, I don't have the weight, uh, its apparent weight. In fact, that is what is asked in uh, part B. The other thing is that I don't know its real weight in air, although I can be able to work it out. But when I think about up thrust being equal to rho vg, I ask myself, what is rho? Rho is the density of the fluid in which the object is immersed. V is the volume of the fluid displaced, which is equal to the volume of the cylinder if the cylinder is completely immersed. And there I know the equation to use. This is how um, sketches, as well as noting down the physical quantities which have been given in the question, help you. 
So we are going to use this one over here. We've been told that uh, the density of the fluid is, of course, water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. And if I work out the volume of this cylinder, which is the equal to the cross-section area, which is 50.24 centimeters cubed times the height of 5 centimeters, or rather this is 50.24 centimeters squared times 5 centimeters, it gives me the volume in centimeters cubed. And then somewhere I remember a concept which I learned in Form 1 that... 1 million centimeters cubed is the same as 1 meter cubed. That is why you should not ignore concepts which you learned in very basic um, topics in Form 1. They are important. Like for example now here, I've just remembered, I need to convert this volume into meters cubed because before I can do anything, to it and then of course multiplied by the g which is the value that i've been given this three zeros four zeros they will go like that and it gives me with these values here so let's go straight to our calculator and see what we get we've got 50.24 multiplied by five multiplied by five and that gives me uh, 251.2 divided by 100 and I'll get 2.512 newtons as the upthrust. And it is just as simple as that. Now let's go to part B. Part B, we are told that calculate the reading on the spring balance. The reading on the spring balance, what does that give us? Remember, this spring balance is supporting that cylinder, and that cylinder is immersed. So the reading on the spring balance is not its real weight. It's actually it's the weight it appears to have when the object is immersed. And we know this one is referred to as apparent weight. Now that I know the upthrust, I can combine that by saying upthrust is equal to weight in air, minus its apparent weight, or the weight it appears to have when it is immersed in water. I know the upthrust. This is what I want. So I definitely need to get its weight in air, which appears to be its real weight. Although somewhere we have said that um, the real weight is the weight it has when it is in vacuum. But because the difference but because the density of water is very small, the up thrust that objects experience when they are immersed in air, like you and me right now, we are immersed in air, there is a tiny force exerted on us by the air, and that tiny force makes us weigh less compared to how much we would weigh in vacuum. If we are able to exist in a vacuum, for example. So the real weight of an object is the weight it has in vacuum. But the difference between the weight it has in vacuum and the weight it has in air is so small that we can ignore it and say that the weight it has in air is its real weight. So the weight it has in air is equal to its mass times the value of the gravitational field strength. Mass is equal to density times volume, of course, times g. The density of this material, it's given, is 1.25 grams per centimeter cubed. I would multiply it by 1,000 to convert it into kilograms per meter cubed. Again, the conversion unit somewhere in Form 1, you remember it? 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed is equals to one gram per centimeters cubed that conversion unit it appeared so simple when you are when you were using it in form one now is the time to make more use of it 
uh, like for example, when I want to convert grams per centimeter cubed into kilograms per meter cubed, I just need to multiply the grams per centimeter cubed by 1000. And that is what I've done here. The volume of this solid over here is this one. And then, uh, and when I work out this, I have uh, 50.24 times 5 divided by 1000. I mean 1 million. Of course, it must be in meters cubed. Of course, times 10. If you use your calculator, let's see what we get there. There are these four zeros here. One, two, three, four. Goes all the way up to that point. So whatever answer we are going to get, we'll divide by 100. So I have 1.25 times 50.24 times 5. Divide everything by 100. And I get 3.14. 3.14 newtons. That is its weight in air. And the upthrust on it is 2.51. So its apparent weight will be given by. So I just need to substitute my values over here. Let me just use another color over there. And use this space here. The upthrust I have is 2.51. Is going to be equal to weight in air is 3.14. And I need to subtract weight in water. And when I rearrange, I can get the weight in water. You see this value here? It's got a negative sign. So I can move it to the other side of the equal sign. And when I do that, this negative becomes positive. And this value here, when it crosses the equal sign, it, its sign changes. So 3.14 minus 2.512. And when I do that, I'm going to get my answer as uh, 3.14 minus 2.512. And I get 0 0.628, 0 0.628, which is, of course, approximately equal to 0 0.63 newtons. And this is how you would work out a question like that. Let's check the answers. Of course, the first part, we can mark our work now. The first part... The upthrust is 2.51, and of course, its apparent weight is 0 0.63. And that example is just as simple as that. Now, let's look at uh, example 3. In example 3, we are given that a stone weighs 2.0 newtons in air and uh, 1.2 newtons when totally immersed in water. Calculate A, the volume of the stone. And the density of the stone. Uh, this is a very simple question in the sense that the moment we consider what is given we are told that it weighs two newtons in air so that is its real weight so we can say that its weight in air is two newtons. Now its weight when immersed in water is 1.2 newtons. I think that is, yes, that is what we've been given. So this is the apparent weight. This is a real weight. Again, just by writing this, I get the idea that I, that I can connect the two equations, its weight in air, that is its real weight, and its weight in water by this equation here. Upthrust is equal to its real weight, which is its weight in air minus its weight in water or its apparent weight or the weight it appears to have 
when it is immersed in the fluid. The fluid in this case is water. Now, but the question asks me to calculate volume of the stone. So what is the volume of the stone? Let me check whether it is fully immersed. Yes, we've been given that it is fully immersed. So if it is fully immersed, then the volume of the fluid displaced is equal to its own volume. So if I can work the, out the volume of the fluid displaced, I can get its volume. Now, how is that connected with V? And how is it connected with U? Upthrust. Upthrust is equals to rho V G. This is the density of the fluid displaced, volume of the fluid displaced, and the G. So by using this, so the upthrust is 2.0 minus 1.2 is equal to the density of the liquid, which is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, the volume of the liquid displaced, which is equal to the volume of the object, times 10. Now on the left-hand side, I'm going to get 0 0.8. On the right-hand side, I've got 10,000 times V, and I get my V as 0 0.8, you know, I divide both sides by 10,000, and I'm going to get 8.0 by 10 raised to minus 1, 2, 3, 4, but now it is 5, minus 5 meters cubed. I can write it like this just for convenience i can say it is 0 0.8 actually i wanted to write it as 80 by 10 minus 6 because i know the significance of minus 6 this is like 80 divided by 1 million and this is like just 80 centimeters cubed. That will be the volume of the water displaced, which is equal to the volume of the object. And that is how I would work out part A. Now let's look at part B. What have we asked to what are we asked in part B? In part B, we are asked to calculate the density of the stone. For me to get the density of any object. I need its mass and I need its volume. Let me see. What is its mass? I know its weight in air. And given that weight is equals to mass times G, for me to get mass, I need that weight and divide it by G. So this mass of the object is going to be equal to its weight in air, which is 2, divided by the value of G, which is 10, and that will be in kilograms. And of course, now I'm going to divide the, the mass of that object by its volume, and its volume in, in meters cubed, it, it's this one, which is uh, 8 by 10 raised to minus 5 meters cubed. This is going to give me 1 over 4. You know, 2 divided by 8 is 1 over 4. And then I'll have 10 raised to minus 5 become a numerator. So it's going to be equal to power 5. Of course, divide by this 10. And I'm going to get a quarter by 10 raised to power that one is going to give me 0 0.25 by 10 raised to power 4 kilograms per meters cubed, which will give me 2500 zero zero kilograms per meters cubed. That is how I would get the mass of the stone. Let me quickly check the answers. The first one, B 
been told that it is 0. Point. The volume of the object is 8 by 10 raised to minus 5 meters cubed, which is correct. And of course, its density is 2,500 kilograms per meters cubed. And that question is just as simple as that. Now you're getting the idea of um, this, this concept here. Writing down what the question is giving you. Very important. Because the moment you start writing those, your mind puts it together. And it sort of uses what has been stored in your mind to guess the equation or the relationship. That is the work of the mind, to put concepts together so that they make meaning. And that is how you would work out example three. And let's go straight to this example four. Now, this is what we are told in uh, example four. A meteorological balloon has a volume of 36 meters cubed and is filled with helium of density 0 0.18 kilograms per meter cubed. If the weight of the fabric is 120 newtons, calculate the maximum load which the balloon can lift. Take the density of air to be 1.3 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, this one is a bit challenging, but the same concepts will apply. Let's see how we go about it. So we are given this balloon. It has a volume of 36 centimeters cubed. So uh, there's the balloon over here. And uh, maybe it carries certain instruments because it is supposed to relay information back to the station as it rises. We are told that its volume is uh, 36. Uh, it's 36 meters cubed, so it's quite big. And then the other one is that it's filled with helium of density. Over here, we've got helium of density 0 0.18 kilograms per meters cubed now the weight of the fabric is 120 newtons what this means is the material of the balloon maybe this rope here if it is um, heavy enough there is the instrumentation here all that is referred to as the fabric so it's got a weight of 120 newtons so the first thing i will want to of course this balloon now is immersed in air whose density rho is 1.3 kilograms per meters cubed definitely there is an upthrust on the balloon due to the air in which it is immersed and I can be able to calculate that upthrust because if I want upthrust, I'll need rho, which is here, V, which is here, and I'll need G. So let me calculate that. So the rho is 1.3 times 36. That is uh, 36 meters cubed times the G which is 10. Let's see what that gives us. So that will be 1.3 times 36 times 10 and we get 468 as the upthrust. 468 newtons as the upthrust. Now let me get the total weight of the object itself downwards remember 120 newtons is the weight of the fabric i need to get the weight of this helium inside here for me to get that weight i need the mass times the g the mass of the helium inside here 
will be the density times the volume, of course, times the G, this G over here. So the density is, of course, 0 0.18. The volume is 36 times G, which is 10. And that will give me 0 0.18 times 36 times 10. That will give me 64.8. 64.8 newtons so the total weight of the object that is its weight its real weight will be 120 plus 64.8 newtons so I'm going to add 120 to this value here and I get 184.8 184.8 newtons that is the weight of the object itself but the up thrust is very big it's 468 so what will happen is that this balloon will start now moving upwards it will start accelerating upwards but if I put some extra weight on it uh, before I go to that notice that the force acting on the balloon vertically downwards is 184.8. The force acting on it is 468 newtons. That is upwards. So there is a resultant force on it of the difference between the two, which is acting upwards, causing the balloon to accelerate upwards. Now, if I put some weight on it, the resultant force is going to reduce. So they are asking me, uh, by asking me to calculate the maximum weight Calculate the maximum load which the balloon can lift. They're asking me to find the difference between the two. Because as it is, it can lift some extra load. But definitely, the load it lifts must be such that the load plus its own weight must be less than this. So the load that it can lift will definitely be given by the difference between the two, which is 468 minus 184.8. And that will give me, so I get 468 minus the answer. I had not erased uh, this value, 184.8. So all I do is just... Uh, punch in 468 minus that particular answer and I'll get 283.2 newtons 283.2 newtons and this is the maximum load that it can lift if I put more a load which is greater than this the balloon will not rise and remember this balloon is supposed to rise so that as it rises it can give us certain parameters as far as the weather is concerned. It can give us the temperature, it can give us humidity and other measurements as required by the meteorological department. So the maximum weight it can lift is 283. As before, let's check whether we've got our answers correct. Yes, I've got the weight of the air in the balloon. Uh, the the weight of the um, I've got 468 over there and I've got 64.8 somewhere giving me 184.8 and finally the maximum load will be 283.2 newtons and that is how you would work out those examples so those are examples which relate to up thrust is equals to rho v g the next examples that we are going to look at relate to the law of flotation.